a whole year perpetual dry erase calendar. Now that is a mouthful, so let's get back to the best stuff, which is the actual true inspiration, uh, which I got from Dave Fogler at Synodrome, so you should watch his video. I mean, before that video, and I was like two months ago, I have never heard about a whole year calendar, much less seen one, so props to him. Now, what's the concept, the whole year? Well, it's obviously trivial. You have the whole year at once, so you have all the months and all the possible days, everything visible at once. Now, you, well, at least I assume that you usually don't find whole year calendars because they get very big very quickly. As you can see here, the cells for days here, they are like 15 millimeters, you know, like the side of the square. And this whole thing is already, I think, 52 centimeters, so over half a meter. So, you know, if your idea of a calendar is that you actually want to write stuff inside like a day cell, well, it's pretty much you'll need like a wall-sized calendar. So, you know, like the way I've solved the, well, solved it, approached it, you know, like within my constraints, is that you still have enough space to probably put a digit or two, and I left some space here, so you can like put a number here and uh, some text here, so it's basically like a footnote. And uh, Dave's version is much larger, uh, you know, like width-wise, but he has to split it into two separate boards. So, you know, I mean, I guess if you stand far enough, you will see all the air at once, but then I don't think you'll be able to read it. So, you know, it's always nice to work within the constraints that you have. And uh, yeah, so that's the whole year thing. Now, the perpetual is, in this case, strongly connected with the dry arrays. That should give you a hint. So basically, the backport has just the matrix for the calendar, like including every possible, well, all the possible days. And then if you want to make it 2023, as it's still here, you just mark the weekends and you like delete 29th of February, because it's, it's going to actually, I think it's going to be here this year. So yeah, I mean, Dave's approach was with, uh, I think it was like chalk markers that you like wipe with water. In my case, I already have a bunch of uh, dry erase boards and like a whole bunch of markers and I think four or five colors. So this made more sense uh, to me. And uh, yeah, I mean, just to give you perspective, this actually sits like in the middle of a door and I've made another accessory, which is this holder. It has precisely two pens. One is the black one for deleting stuff and another one is white one in case I actually want to do my footnote stuff. And this one also has this small like an eraser for this stuff. So in case of any sort of so small mistake, you have all the stuff you need to operate on in one place. And yeah, I'm not the kind of guy who would actually be writing stuff inside like a calendar cells and definitely not like on a physical calendar. So for me, this approach actually makes a lot of sense. It was quite fun to make, it's far from perfect, but I've been using it for two months now. And it's kind of cool, I mean, the main purpose is that you actually see the whole year at once, and, you know, like, right now, we're actually, like, past 2023. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to reset it, basically clean it off and uh, put on the weekends. And to do that, I can actually show you another cool feature of this design, which is that it's magic you can just take it off, because it's magnetic. And you can put it down on any flat surface for, you know, like resetting, cleaning, or talking about how it's actually made. So, yeah, I mean, the front panel, it's uh, two pieces of acrylic. And correction, this is actually exactly 50 centimeters wide and 25 centimeters uh, tall. Uh, so yeah, that's a nice interplay, you know, again, constraints are the thing, so between fitting inside the door frame, well, the glass pane uh, part of it, I actually have and actually stock 25 by 25 centimeters uh, plates, like of various plastics, I really like this material, and generally speaking, that kind of a size, I rarely do stuff that's bigger than like A3 size, like size of European paper, like this cutting mat here. So yeah, it's like one interacting with the other, and that's why the shape is exactly that. I like it, it's a nice 2 to 1 ratio, and you know, like, I've got some space 
uh, for the footnote stuff. So yeah, acrylic on top, uh, the bottom it's, I hope, obviously MDF and it's that because I already got it. It was, uh, I think it was as a packing material for something, so I essentially got it for free and it was like a big sheet, so I just had to uh, cut it down. And then next, it's actually mechanically connected. Uh, it's uh, 8 bolts and nuts, these are M2, so metric, like really small. I think they are probably the smallest metric ones you can get, it's like, I don't know, whatever, 64th of an inch. And yeah, I mean, a bit of an overkill, but you can actually disassemble it, they all work. I had to grind them down on like the bottom side for them not to stick out. That was actually much easier than I thought, my Dremel clone tool just ate through them, so more like a feather touch operation. And yeah, what's more to that? Uh, the matrix just hand uh, painted, hand, hand drawn. And uh, yeah, the last thing I guess is the magnetic strips. These are, <laughs> I actually laugh at it every time because these are relatively very expensive. These are actual 3M, you know, like VHB magnetic strip stuff. I mean, they're awesome. I mean, they're worth every cent or penny or whatnot. And I was thinking that, you know, like this amount is an overkill, which maybe it still is, but then again, this thing is uh, on a door and I actually use the door every day. So, you know, like the last thing I would like is for this to fall down when someone slams the door. So maybe it's not as much of an overkill. But anyways, I mean, material wise, it's like very simple. Now of the things that are obvious screw ups. So the one that I dislike the most, but you know, happens is that October got squeezed on this side. Uh, if you can see it, it's actually smaller, but I think it's actually okay on this side. So my lesson here was that drawing like large tables basically by hand, it's so tedious, it's so boring that it's really easy to screw it up. And I don't have any eraser, whatever. I mean, it's just MDF. So whatever you use, you're not gonna be able to like, use in terms of a pen, you are probably not going to be able to take it out. So, so yeah, that's the one thing. And the second thing is that obviously the screws, like each of them is like, in whatever place it wanted to go. My excuse for that is I was hand drilling. It's like very small holes in acrylic with, you know, just your run of a mill metal drill bits. So, yeah, I mean, but if you have a drill press, that shouldn't be any of a problem. But yeah, uh, anyway, I think one last thing is that I think the corner of the MDF is chipped in here. Again, you wouldn't see it like in normal usage, but I mean, overall, it's far from perfect, but it works. And uh, I had fun doing that. Now, like after two months, if I were to do a proper one, because I still consider this a prototype, you know, like when I do prototypes, I still try to do them to the best of my knowledge and ability and in vast majority of cases you know the prototypes end up being the thing that I'm actually using and again I wouldn't be trying to sell this kind of quality to anyone it's you know like I do it for myself so mm, let's say the levels of quality and the bars to pass are different in any case if I were to do it again I would just order like pre-cut acrylic this is 2 millimeters thick and also like pre-cut white PVC also 2 millimeters thick. I wouldn't use bolts and nuts because that's an overkill. I would just rivet it. Yeah, I've got myself a rivet gun. It's awesome. So yeah, rivets. And then I don't think I would be painting the matrix again. I would probably just print it. And yeah, I do not have like a large format printer. I have like a very old maximum A4 printer. But still like print a couple of sheets and just splice them together much less work and much less error prone and uh, yeah I mean the layout is fine and the magnetic tape is also awesome so yeah on that side I mean pretty happy with that and in any case I think I need to reset it right now I don't think I'll be recording that because that's gonna be extremely boring but maybe at least you know like initial part of it that you can actually see that you know, it is dry erase, of course, you know, like this stuff gets old, so it's not gonna come that easily, but then again, not much work, and you only do it once a year. Yeah? Delete 2023, no more, no more of you. Let's all move to 2024. 
And on that notion, thanks for watching and uh, have a happy and a nice and good and productive 2024. And the jump cut. This makes this uh, a bonus material of some sorts. Uh, I guess that means that the previous cut is going to be used as is. I mean, no going back, no undo here. And yeah, I still refuse to do any editing. My editing starts at uh, jump cuts and ends at jump cuts. Yeah, for now at least. So yeah, it's set up for 2024. And uh, yeah, it doesn't take that much work, not that much time. Obviously you wouldn't be wanting to do this every day, once a year. It's fine. And yeah, I know, it's very, very glossy. But that's... Yeah, I don't have any camera filters lenses or you know like all of that fancy stuff so it's actually not that bad in person like from where i'm looking at it there's like no reflection at all so yeah i mean you know cameras ah and one thing i remember is that if you are asking why like the back plate is just raw mdf no treatment painting or anything like that well the reason is twofold 25 percent of the reason is that i thought that this way both the black pants and the white pants will look just fine and basically work. And the 75% of the reason is that I was lazy. I didn't care. I mean, it's a color. It will have a color. Might just as well be whatever MDF's color is. I don't know. Brownish? Uh, yellowish? Anyways, was fun.